This week's Bitcoin FUD can't end soon enough. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. Denmark is considering a 42% tax on unrealized gains and losses for cryptocurrencies. And of course, instead of people actually reading through the entire article, immediately the message is that this is being implemented and it's imminent. But wait, stop. Is it actually being implemented? Or is it only being discussed? Well, like I said, guys, it has been a crazy, crazy week, uh, especially with the ECB and the Minneapolis Fed Reserve essentially proposing a ban uh, or a tax on Bitcoin. So, yeah, the then they fight you stage is happening and real. So, of course... This article about Denmark considering the 42% tax is, is obviously not welcome. So let's take a look at it, though, because that's all it is, guys. It's just a proposal right now. And of course, I know some people are like, oh, but you don't understand. This sets a precedent. Let's let's wait, right? Let's stop and let's actually take a look at this. Denmark proposed a new capital gains tax on unrealized gains and losses for crypto assets. The proposed tax regulation will reach the parliament in 2025. That's right. The proposal will reach parliament in 2025. And then if passed, it will become effective in 2026. Okay. So what does that really mean? That means that there's going to be discussions about this. That means that there's going to be that there's going to be advocates for this, advocates against it. There's going to be a lot of pushback. And eventually, right, eventually, there's going to be some type of a regulation that is drafted. Now, in no way am I suggesting that this is good, okay? Like, I'm not sitting here trying to pretend like, it's okay, guys, it won't be as bad. Um, because in having some conversations uh, this morning, I, um, Mr. Hoddle made an excellent point uh, about unrealized capital gains. And that is, if you own a home, at least in the at least in the states in the U.S. Uh, and in Canada, um, we've been paying unrealized capital gains all this time, and I actually can't disagree with that because every year, if the value of my house goes up, right, I, I get a I get a notice, okay, from from the uh, from the tax collector that from the county tax collector that lets me know what the new appraisal is on my house and how much more in taxes I'm going to be paying. And of course, I understand there's nuance to that. You know, people can sit there and argue that that's not a wealth tax. It's not unrealized capital gains, but it is because I haven't actually made any more, but yet I'm expected to pay a higher tax rate based on the perceived higher value of my house. So it's yeah, it, we're already paying unrealized capital gains. And no, this is not an argument to say that because we're already paying this indirectly in some roundabout way, that um, that it makes it okay. It does not make it okay. But it did make me beg the question, how many countries actually have um, specifically unrealized capital gains tax and or a wealth tax. Now we're not talking about one that is hidden behind the behind the county taxes for your home or anything like that. I am talking about genuinely a a wealth tax. Of course, found this on Reddit, right? Uh, there's a person who was answering because I, I had to ask the question, like, which countries have actually implemented capital gains and wealth taxes? And somebody responded back from Norway, and they said, yep, it's part of the wealth tax, and it can cause a problem if you own private shares that you can't sell. I know someone who paid tax on shares that ended up being worthless, but considering the wealth tax is around 1%, starts at around 200k and has big discounts for your primary residence. I don't think he was doing that badly. Billionaires are taxed at 1%. There are more billionaires per capita in Nordic countries than anywhere that's not a tax haven. So the Nordic model clearly isn't too bad for rich people either. Ah, kind of have a hard time with that, right? Um 
it's like we're just we're, we're kind of we're taking the lesser of of two evils. You know, this is this is what's happening. It's it's always the you know I will agree to this because it's not as bad as this other solution. And and if you ask me, um, this is this is a trick. It's it's a constant trick to always get us into accepting, essentially into compromising, right? We compromise, we end up compromising for things that we really shouldn't. The reason why I made this clip is because I saw on social media that a lot of people were pretending, okay, or maybe they're just doing this for the clicks and the views, um, but essentially trying to create the narrative that this is already happening, okay, that uh, essentially it's a law that has been passed, which is completely untrue. No law has actually been passed in Denmark. But I think the reason why people are worried is because of the comments that came out from the ECB, the comments that came out from the Minnesota Fed. And then on top of that, we saw Italy implement a higher capital gains tax. I think they hiked it from 26% to, to 42%. Um, but the point is, is that we're seeing all of this massive government encroachment essentially trying to block off, right? Block off the exit ramps, so to speak. And so I think that this is what is concerning people. I'd like to know your thoughts. Do you live in a country where there's a wealth tax or a unrealized capital gains tax? What's the overall feeling uh, about this? Do, do people just kind of, you know, suck it up and deal with it? Or are you hearing people complain and is there all kinds of outrage? Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. That's it for today. I will catch you all next week.